I am here with a very familiar face, uh, radio personality, TV personality, and walking music encyclopedia, Mr. Matt Pinfield. Matt, it's great to have you here today. Jimmy, great to see you. So before we get too deep into your illustrious career, I've always been curious if you were ever a songwriter or an aspiring songwriter. Yeah, I mean, I used to write lyrics, you know, constantly as a teenager, because that's what I thought at one point I wanted to be. I wanted to be either a disc jockey or a front man in a very successful rock and roll band. So I used to write with a few of the local bands and down in East Brunswick, New Jersey, I was in, in the New Brunswick area. And um, But then I realized at one point that it was time I was going to be the messenger as opposed to... You were going to be the messenger. Yeah. And, and about <laughs> that, I think very few people have had as front row a seat uh, to the music industry over the past 20, 25 years that you have had. At what point did you realize that you were like the dude because I remember years ago in New Jersey as well you were the guy that everybody needed to know you had radio access and you were an accessible person you were always interested in what bands were doing um, at what point did you realize like wow I've really built myself a career around you know my love of music we well, you know it started for me at Rutgers University at WRSU the Rutgers station and I was DJing at a place that you used to go to, the Melody in New Brunswick, oh, yeah. which is legendary place. Long gone. Yeah, long gone. Um, yeah, I remember well. You know, <laughs> do you remember I actually offered to buy you? No, I did. I bought you a beer. Yeah. And you actually <laughs> refused it and said, I only drink Jack. Oh, yeah, back then. <laughs> now I'm not drinking at all, which is pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I used to love Jack and Cokes. That was my kind of my fuel yeah. and DJing five, six hours a night. The and, fuel for, uh, the, for the rock and roll fantasies. Yeah. While I was a DJ at Rutgers, it was really important to me to nurture the scene around New Brunswick and Central Jersey. So I encouraged people to bring in their demos or their acetates on vinyl or their tapes. So I could play them. So, you know, we could promote the shows that were going on at the Court Tavern of the Mellow. Right. It, it was a very important role that, that you filled because, again, at that time, before social media, it was difficult to get to, you know, the men behind the curtain, the people that really pulled the strings. And you were really one of the few people that, again, was somebody that was accessible. But in your role as a curator and in the form of A&R that you did, what did you look for? Like, how would you determine that, you know, this guy knows what he's doing and these guys maybe don't? Well, I think the thing that you're looking for, and it comes back to what your show is all about, Jimmy, is you're looking for great songs, great songwriting, and, and people that can perform them well and that you think have legs that are going to go past, you know, one record or one hit wonder. Now, at a certain point, you moved into the lead A&R role at Columbia Records. So, in regards to a &R, uh, talk to me about one of the bands that you really enjoyed signing. Coheed and Cambria were one of those bands. You know, they've gone on, I had two gold records with them. Um, they're an incredible self-sufficient touring act who's open for Black Sabbath, and they're on the road right now with Iron Maiden. They play with Linkin Park. Uh, you know, they're worldwide, they have a huge following. Um, they're an incredible live band, and Claudio Sanchez is a great songwriter. Not only is he a great musician, I mean, he's an incredible guitar player. You'll see him on the cover of Guitar Player Magazine. But as a songwriter, he's tapped into this thing where he did a series of albums based on these sci-fi characters. And these records are just incredible because they work songs. They work on a level where it could be about a broken heart, but then there's this other tier where it's part of an entire story. Now, Mark Wahlberg and his production company just optioned those that story from those albums it's called the Amory Wars. It's also a bunch of graphic novels that are best-selling graphic novels. So, I mean, it's actually now it's going to Hollywood. So safe to cool. say your hunch was correct. Yeah, absolutely. So what have you been up to lately? Uh, I was involved with MTV again. Uh, 120 Minutes with Matt Pinville is a show. It's on a Friday morning, 6 to 8. Um, and then I have a, a podcast on iTunes and through MTVHive.com called The Hivecast with Matt Pinfield. That's What's on your iPod? I'm real curious about oh, that there's, also. There's about 24,000 songs. I mean, it's everything. Everything from old blues and Sinatra to Springsteen. What did you play this morning coming um, in? You, what did I listen to on the way in this morning? Believe it or not, Mark Lanigan, who used to be in the Screaming Trees, you know that <laughs> Seattle band? His new solo record called Blues I nearly lost Funeral. you, right? That yeah, was, a great was, song. Yeah. His new record's cool. Yeah, I really like that. You still keep in touch with all these guys, like these yeah, uh, stalwarts uh, of the 90s? A lot of them. Yes, I do. I'm friends with all these guys. You know, like whether it's you know Mike McCready from Pearl Jam, Chris Cornell from Soundgarden, Jerry Cantrell from Mouse and James Perry from Jane's Addiction. All those guys. Are, When's the know. book coming out? There's got to be a Matt Pinfield book. I am point. actually working on a book right now. Um, it's a concept book. 
about the 90s, and I'm going to do four volumes. I want to go decades backwards. And it's not only a history book, but it also has my personal experiences. There's some really incredible stuff in there. Give us a preview of that. Uh, you must have seen some pretty amazing things in your time. Well, you know, when you talk about the fact that I'd worked in the music department at MTV, when people, when, this, when it was really still breaking artists every week, and I was one of the 10 people picking videos and making them buzz clips and fighting for artists in there, you know what I mean, to get on. I remember us taking a lot of heat for playing Radiohead stuff off the bends, and uh, you know other record companies would go, well, "They're one at Wonder with Creep," and of course it proved to be wrong. They're a huge band. So when the actual uh, gold records were given to us, I remember Tom York actually breaking the tears when he gave us the gold record and said, "I knew you took a lot of crap for staying behind this record, so I just wanted to say thanks." And when I saw that emotion come out of him, it really blew me away. I was it's moved. very rare that when something is good is also popular. I mean, you can yeah. say that about the Beatles, but when that happens, it, it, it's a really great feeling. Like on the business side of things, when you write a song and, and you have the satisfaction of having written, you know, a song that means a lot to you and, and means a lot to other, to other people. Also on the business side, when you, when you see a band that you got behind early go on to that type of success, that's got to feel great also. It really does. And I think that's one of the things that's going to be exciting about the book is you'll, you'll get a lot of real fly on the wall you know, stories about, you know, people when they were starting out and just a lot of different things they went through. Where do you see the music industry going uh, from somebody who's seen it in its heyday uh, all through the social media revolution into what it is now, which is, it seems like the Wild West. What's your take on, on where it's going? People are digesting and listening to more music than ever. They're just finding it in different ways. And the industry is now catching up with that. Obviously with Spotify and Mog and new um, you know streaming services that are out there and um, you know Amazon, iTunes, things have changed. There are so many different ways of delivering music to fans now. What was the project you were involved in with uh, Jimmy Iovine? I did a thing which was great because it was so early but it was really exciting. Jimmy Iovine and Doug Morris came up with this idea to do a show called FarmClub.com. By Farm Club, they meant, you know, new and up and coming artists. And they wanted to have this synergy of a record company, a TV show, and um, a website. So, revolutionary. Yeah, record company, TV show, website was the idea. So, Farm Club was a website that you would go and upload your music to if you were an aspiring band. And we would have this thing where people would go on and they would actually vote on it way before Idol or The Voice or any of that stuff. It's way early. In the beginning of 2000, we aired on USA Network. And the show was doing amazingly at first. In fact, it was selling records not only for all the artists that performed on there. It was on the cover of the New York Times business section. There was a picture of me, Eminem, and Dr. Dre. The three horsemen of the apocalypse there. <laughs> well, you know what the crazy thing was? I ran into Jimmy Ivey, and I was hosting a U2 uh, world premiere for their album, for How to Dismen All Atomic Bomb, and Jimmy came up to me and said, Matt, we were just too early, man, because nobody had broadband at the time. You really had to be tech savvy to upload your music. It just didn't take because it was too early, and nobody had broadband. Well, I think in a lot of ways, you're you yourself and your career you you've been at the forefront you've been ahead of the curve on a lot of things and i think uh including you know what i'm doing i think if if there wasn't a matt pinfield there might not be a jimmy lloyd well there might be a jimmy lloyd but maybe not a jimmy lloyd songwriter showcase so for that i'm i'm very grateful and uh, really appreciative of all that you've done and just been uh it's been great having you on the show today oh it's great being there with you jimmy thanks so much it's uh, i really enjoyed it and i enjoy the show oh thanks again thanks for having me Thank you.